Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated, and today I will show you how to create zero invoices from data inside of your Google Sheets. Let's get started. The first step is to create a Google Sheet that will contain all your invoice information. So you can see that here I have already prepared a template for, for that purpose, and you will see that there are two different sheets inside of this document. So the first one is invoices, and the second one is line items. Let's start with the invoices first. Inside of the invoice sheet, we have following columns. ID, which is our internal number of the invoice, does not need to match the number of the invoice in zero. Then we have the customer name so that we know for who this invoice should, uh, should go to. And the next step is the customer email. We'll use this to identify customers inside of, our, inside of zero. The next step is reference, and then there are two technical fields, which is create invoice, status, and finally, there is the zero invoice number that we will receive back from zero. At this stage, we can leave those fields blank. It is possible also to add other fields such as date or due date, but let's keep it simple for the time being. Let's move on to the line items. Inside of line items, the first column identifies to which invoice this line item belongs. This way, we'll be able to link the line items to a specific invoice. The next step is the description of the invoice, quantity, amount, and the account code to which we'll be booking this particular invoice. If it's sales invoice, most likely it will be 200. For the tax code, you can leave it blank, so it will take the default settings from your zero. Now, how do we move all that information into Zero? For that, we'll use a tool called Integromat. You can read more about Integromat in the description below. And once you set up Integromat account, the first step will be to create a new scenario. What we will start with is adding a new Google Sheet module. All right, and here we will select Search Rows. First step will be to connect Google Sheet with your Google Drive and Google Docs. Once this is done, you have to select the, the spreadsheet that we have just created. And we will start searching from the sheet that we have created the invoices in, which will be invoices. The first row contains headers, this is correct. And inside of the filter, we will put two filtering variables. The first step will be create invoice. We want to create invoice only for the fields that we have marked, yes. And the second rule will be the status should be empty. Does not exist means there should be no variables. Okay, so let's test this first. So let's run once. We have received zero return values. We have zero bundles. This is because we have not marked anything as yes. So let's change the create invoice to yes. And let's repeat this. You can see that we have found data for the first invoice. Okay, so now let's proceed to find the customer for this invoice inside of zero. Let's add zero module. Search for contacts. The first step is to authenticate zero and select your organization. The next step is to select what are we going to search for to find the customer. We'll select the field and we will select email. You could also use name, but it's always more unique and safer to select for emails because we know those will be unique. In this case, we say filter emails that equal to the email that we have received from Google Sheet. Okay, let's test this part as well. All right, you can see that we have uh, found the customer so that we are able to create invoice for this customer. But what in the situation that we have not found a customer inside of our data? Let's check the situation as well. I'll create new invoice for a new customer. And let's make sure that we keep the ID as number two so that we don't confuse the invoices. Okay, let's run Integromat again. And you will see that in the first operation, we have found the customer. In the second operation, we have not found the customer. So that means we'll create a new customer. 
we will go this route only if the total number of bundles from the previous step is equal to zero. Zero means no information has been found. And we'll create a new customer with the name that will come from our Google Sheet customer name. And we will also add email so that we can find this customer later. Okay, so now that we can cater for both scenarios for the existing customer and non-existing customers, we'll do a small trick. We'll basically copy the search for contacts and we'll put it again here. So we will search for the contact again after this contact has been already created. This will assure that whether this contact has existed or not, by the time we'll get to this module, it will be already existing in the system. So we'll execute this leg in all circumstances so there is no filter necessary here. What is important though is the order of execution. So let's click on the magic wand and you need to know that inside of Integromat, the execution order follows the top branch first. So in this case, if there is no, no contact found, new contact would be created. And then after that, the second branch would be executed, which means we would found that contact because it was already created here. However, if we disconnect this branch, save and connect it again, this situation would change. Let's click on auto align and you can see that in this case the modules have switched places. This means that the second search would be executed for the second time without the customer being created yet. So it's quite important to know that execution order follows which branch is at the top. To know which branch is on the top is not what's visually shown in Integromat, it is what is being shown to you once you click Auto Align. To change the order of the branches, you simply need to unlink, and the last connected module is basically the last module in terms of the order. So let's reconnect again, let's save, and then let's reconnect again. This was the module that was connected second after the first one. Clicking on auto line will switch them around. So this execution will be executed first and then this module will continue. So let's run this one more time. So we can see that for the customer that was missing in our database, that customer has been created. And by the time we got to this uh, second module for search, both customer were found. So we can see the customer number one and you can see the customer number two in Tegramat. Okay, so now once we are sure that both customers are inside of zero, we can proceed now to creating an invoice. Okay, so let's select create an invoice module. Okay, and let's connect it to the second search module. Here, the first step will be to select whether this is a bill or an invoice. In our case, we are issuing invoice accounts receivable. And the next step, we need to have the contact ID, which means the customer. We will take it from the preceding module here, contact ID. Okay, now let's manually add the line items just for the demonstration. Okay, so we need description, quantity and amount. We can select tax code, but we don't have to do that. Uh, neither tax amount zero is amazing in, in, in this regard that it will take some of the default assumptions for us. Okay, so let's add this line item and let's click OK. And let's run this scenario as a test. All right, you can actually see that there were two invoices that were created straight away because we had two invoices on our list. Okay, so let's go back to zero and see whether they are here. And you can see that both invoices are here and what they're missing, they're missing the reference and they're missing the details that you want to have inside. So let's just go back and fix this, okay? So let's first add the reference. Here you can show advanced settings and you can customize date. If you do not select it, it will be today. If you don't select due date, it will be the current due date you can decide whether the line items are tax inclusive or exclusive. You can also customize the invoice number. For this case, we'll keep it as the default invoice number just to follow the numbering in zero. And then we'll add a reference from our Google Sheet. We can select the branding team. Let's select very orange invoice. 
we can change currency code and put other settings over here. What is important is we can select status here. So we can authorize the invoice straight away, we can mark it as submitted, or we can just have it as draft. In the beginning, I would recommend keeping this as draft. Later, you can authorize them immediately, and you can also immediately send them out to contacts, which means the moment you mark the invoice to be created inside of Google Sheets, the whole execution happens and your customer will get the email with the invoice. For the time being, let's just keep it in the draft stage, okay? Now, the question is, how do we get the line items to be placed inside of uh, Zero? For this, we will have to do another search inside of Google Sheets. So what we'll do, we'll copy this module here. And we will be searching the second sheet line items. And for the filter, what we want to return is only line items that belong to the particular invoice that we are generating. So this was the reason why we have created this ID in the beginning. So we will use that ID in the beginning. And then we can remove the tax code in this part. So that's everything. Let's disconnect it from the create invoice module just to see how it works. And let's just keep one invoice to be created at a time. So let's delete the second one. And let's test the result. So now you can see that we are having the line items listed over here uh, with the names that are similar to what are the names in zero, but they are not exactly the same because you can see the DC and uh, the numbering for the columns inside of Google Sheets. So we need to do a bit of transformation. So that next step will be to use a module called JSON. JSON and aggregate to JSON. Okay, so we'll add it here behind Google Sheets. And then as the source module, we'll take the Google Sheets module before. And then for the data structure, we'll add a new data structure. Let's call it zero line items. And we could manually add all the line items, data required like description, quantity, unit price, and so on. But to make it easier, you can also copy the template of the data format, which is in the description of this video, or on the website of, of Zero, And you can use this generator here and copy-paste this inside of the sample data. So you can see that there is a sample data here. Let's click Save. And this will create the data structure that is needed for Zero line items. OK, let's save. And now it's a simple matching exercise with the data that came from Google Sheets. We are ignoring the item code because we are not tracking any items in our case. So let's add description, quantity, unit amount. We can ignore tax. That means the zero will use the default. And then for the account code, we can put 200 for sales as a hard-coded value, or we can use the value from Google Sheet. In case you would be having more valid sales accounts, you can individually select those. Otherwise, you can just do hard-coded 200 here to avoid any mistake. Okay, let's see what happens. So we can see we have received a string with all the data gathered together into one single JSON string, but we need to change it into Integromat object again, otherwise it will not recognize this string inside of the zero module. So this might be a little bit tricky, maybe there is a better way how to do it, but this one works. So now we need to transform this to object inside of Integromat. So we will use parse JSON. And let's click OK. Let's see what happens now. OK. And now you see that we have output of two bundles with the data that is coming from our Google Sheets. It's pretty much similar to the output that we were getting inside of Google Sheets. It just has slightly different names for, for each of the variables. So it's the names that are important to match zero requirements so that uh, it recognizes this as specific amount. Um, and this is the way why we're using those JSON modules. Okay, so now here we need to just aggregate those two bundles into one. We use the array aggregator. 
let's select the preceding module and let's scroll all the way down and let's just select all of the values that are there. If some of the values inside of JSON have no value, if there is null or nothing in them, they will not show up. So for your test data, you just need to be sure that any data that you send for line items, if you'd like to send tax code, you need to have some dummy data before you start uh, experimenting with it here. Otherwise, it will not be visible. Okay, let's click OK. Let's run it one more time. And we have a single integromat array with two items inside which are matching our requirements for zero. Okay, let's connect the zero module here. And now let's get rid of this mockup line item and let's click map. And here we'll use this array as it is. Okay, and let's give it a go. Okay, let's see what's inside of zero. Great, we see that we have another invoice with the correct reference over here with view amount already here. And let's see what's inside. And both line items are correctly created over here. Um, you see we don't have a due date because there is no default setting on this account. If there would be a default setting, it would automatically get added. And you can see all the other information like uh, tax rate has been added by, by default. And right now this invoice is ready to approve or email to the person that will receive it. Okay, let's add one more final touch. So we don't want to be sending out the same invoice all the time. We just want to update status over here. So what we will add at the end is update a row. Let's select the spreadsheet and we'll update the invoice sheet for this. For the row number, we'll take the row number that we were operating on from the first module, row number. And what we want to update over here, we want to change the status to whatever status of the invoice we have created. So we could either type draft manually here, or we could take the status directly from zero, which is safer because we know that this is the actual status. And also we would use the zero invoice number here so that we can find this invoice later, okay? So let's create this invoice one more time. We can see that this invoice has been created again, and we can see that this invoice has status draft, and we have the invoice number over here. And this way, because we have status here, when this scenario runs one more time, there will be nothing to, to look for. There will be nothing to look for. Uh, actually, if there is nothing found, we just need to put a filter to stop it from execution. So if the total number of bundles equals to zero, sad face, no invoices to issue, okay? So let's issue another one. So in this case, we just move it to yes and start this scenario over here. Mistake, it should be not equal to zero. So if it's not equal to zero, then it should be executed. Let's run it one more time. The invoice has been created. Now another one will not be created. We can see this additional invoice here with multiple line items. And we can also see this invoice here together with status draft. Obviously, we don't want to be clicking manually uh, to start this scenario. This is why we would use scheduling and we would set this to be checked, for example, every day or a specific day of the week if you would like to issue the invoices on a specific day of the week, let's say Tuesday. Okay, I hope that was useful for you guys. And if you have more questions about uh, Zero or other business uh, automations, then let me know in the comments and please subscribe for more business automation videos. Thank you.